All right, part D. We start with Teferi's Puzzle Box. This is fun. This is a fun card in the right deck. This is the right deck. During each player's draw phase, they count the cards in their hand, put those on the bottom of the library, then draw that many cards. So it makes it people cannot keep a counterspell in their hand. They will get rid of it. Maybe they'll draw another one. Maybe not. Uh, the funniest game ever where this came into play was I played this, and then a buddy of mine put out... Uh, no, I'm thinking of something completely different. Never mind, blame my last. So anyway, Kaya Foglio, another artist I wish would come back to the game. Spellskite. This is a part of the protection suite because I need ways of protecting Jara because she'll be targeted. For some reason, people want to kill her as soon as they can. So, one blue or two life. Change the target to target spell or ability to spell skite. So you will take the bullet. There we go, Reliquary Tower. I have no maximum hand size. Add one of my mana pool. Shiny. Mountain. It that betrays. 12 for an 11, 11, 11, and now later 2. Whenever an opponent sacrifices a non token permanent, put the card on the Battlefield under my control. So, don't want to pay 12. <laughs> Just want to wait a little bit. Island. Island. Mana Rock. Dracuseth, Maw of Flames. So, 7 for a 7 7 flyer. When it attacks, it does 4 damage to one target and 3 damage to, each, to up to 2 other targets playing one game so one guy was casting toxic deluge and I could tell he kind of wanted to kill Dracoseth and I told him hey Eugenie if you cast that for six or less Dracoseth won't attack you he'll attack these guys and take care of these cards that are problems Eugenie thought that was a fair deal <laughs> another guy did not and immediately caused a lot of hate and discontent in the game because he said I didn't know we were playing Arch Enemy no, we're playing Commander, which means we're playing Politics, which means Trakoseth is going to hurt you. The game went downhill from there, but we'd all been drinking a lot of beer, so it was going to happen anyway. Mountain. Artisan of Kozilek, 9 for a 10-9 when I cast him, and it is cast without paying its mana cost. So, even if it comes out of the time stream through Jorah, it will still be cast, and I can still return a creature card from a graveyard to the battlefield. Time Bender. So, when he's turned face up, choose one, move two time counters from, and just suspend a card. I've already talked about the permanent thing enough. Or, put two time counters on a suspend a card. Of course, I don't have too many ways of recasting him to flip him over to remorph him do it again. So it's like a one-shot. Dissipate. Another card that I've always liked. I like the art. I like saying it dissipates. Three, contract spell. Exile that spell. If you weren't born with it, you don't need it. And I get to decide if you don't need it. Ha-ha! <laughs> Crystal Vein. Another way of getting the two colorless mana in a smaller package for Jorah. High Market. So when I blow up the world, if I've got a creature out, I can get something out of it, rather than just dying for no reason at all. Meta Vault. So one, adds three colorless mana. If I don't untap it for four at the beginning of my turn, I take a point of damage. I kind of don't like that it's not linear with Shora. She needs two, this gives me three, one extra. But if I've got another land, then it's okay. Math. Spine of Is Sa. Seven. When it enters the battlefield, destroy target permanent. When it's put into the graveyard from the battlefield, 
return it to my hand. So if I'm blowing up the world, I'd be blowing up this, and I'd be bringing it back and putting it in the... Well, if she's blown up, then it's not coming back out of the time stream, but... Yeah. I'll still blow up something. Cause like the Great Distortion. I've never had him in play. I, I don't play Jorah very often. Um, I think if you've been paying attention to the cards and what I've been saying about them, you kind of know why I don't play that often. It's considered an obnoxious deck for some reason. I don't know, you know, for some reason when I blow up everything and then smash somebody with a huge creature they have no possibility of defending themselves against, they don't like it. But, yeah, that's, that's on them, I guess. Anyway, he's a 12-12, doesn't have trample, he has menace, which is pseudo-evasion, not as good as trample or anything cool like that, no annihilator. I can discard a card with the mana cost X, counter a target spell with the mana cost X. He also draws me cards. So it comes to play, if I fear the seven cards in my hand, I draw cards equal to the difference. I really want to see if the countering actually is something that I want to do. Or if I want to change him for some other big threat. Huh. Hmm. Anyway. Obliterate. It cannot be countered. Destroy all artifacts, creatures, and lands. It can't be... I wish they would bring back the keyword bury. They used to say bury target creature. Um, bury target artifact, which means it dies without regeneration. I think bringing back that elegant keyword, bury all artifacts, creatures, and lands, would be would be nice, would be poetic. But they've started to take regeneration out of the game. It hasn't been. Christ, the only thing I could think of are reprint cards that have regenerate anymore. So it's not something that. They really uh, need to do, I guess. Anyway, here's how I can get that time bender back. One colorless, one blue, return target wizard I control to its owner's hand. Give me my wizard! So I can morph him back in under play to flip him over again. And here's Kazalik the Butcher of Truth. When I cast this build, draw four cards 12 12, and now later four, no evasion. Put in a graveyard from anywhere, its owner shuffles there. Okay, so I shuffle my graveyard into my library, not him. Actually... And he doesn't do this. So Ulamog does, he doesn't. When he dies, he dies. Weird. Counterspell. Hot Chick Art from L.A. Williams. Island. Island. Island, Siobhan Reef, Hinder, another card I like for the art, if nothing else. Counter target spell, put on the top or bottom of the owner's library instead of the player's graveyard, and unlike spell crumple, this does not go on the bottom of my library. One use only. Okay, another way of protecting Jura. Dark Steel Plate, 3, it's indestructible, equip creatures indestructible, equip her for 2. I'm probably not going to bother equipping anything else. Scroll Rack. Um, <clears throat> obviously because, so the destruction cards, there's not that many, really, numerically. And I need ways of finding them if I get myself in a position where that's what I'm going to want to do. Sometimes I'm not worried about destroying everything and just casting the big threats is enough. But it's good to have that option, that backup. So I can set aside cards in my hand that aren't doing anything for me, draw hopefully better cards, and then slowly recover those cards back from the top of my library. Yako Hops. Six. You see, there we go. Bury. Bury all artifacts, creatures, and lands. So they're just left with enchantments and planeswalkers. Which could be a problem. Oh yeah, it doesn't. none of these hit planeswalkers because they're all so old they don't mention them. Hmm. Except Apocalypse. Remove all permanents. Apocalypse says, your planeswalker don't mean nothing to me. 
He's exiled. You're out of there. Dark Soul Signet. Nice to have some way of when I'm blowing up everything, having some mana at least that sticks around. Inkwell Leviathan. Island Walk Trample Shroud. 7 11 for 9. Or 2 in a few turns. This guy took me a long time to wrap my head around. I'll tell you that. 8 for a 6 6 flyer. At the beginning of my post combat main phase, I get an additional beginning phase after the. The, the, the wording is just so clunky. I mean, maybe they could have made it more elegant, cleaner. But the idea is. He gives me two upkeeps, so therefore I have every turn I'm removing two counters from the suspended card. Now it could be that at the beginning of my post combat main phase, I remove the second or the fourth counter and something comes into the time stream and it can't attack because I'm already past that combat phase, but so it comes into play quicker and I do get an additional draw step. Wildfire. Yeah, it, this is light on the destroy everything. It'll clear all the small creatures out and put everybody back a bit. Sacrifice four lands, four damage to each creature. Yeah, that'll do some damage. Here we go, Infernal Titan. This guy, I'm more likely to sandbag in my hand rather than run through the time stream because of the aforementioned Drenith Magistrate scenario. So if I hard cast him, then he comes into play, deals three damage to the magistrate, and then I'm good with the uh, the time stream. And he's got fire breathing, and when he attacks, I can do one, two, or three damage, divided as I choose. Scalding Tarn, fetch land, everybody knows about fetch lands. Here's a new addition to the deck. Since he's the fine top, another way of cycling through the top of my library in order to get to cards I need. Neat. Command Bacon. So, Isra has been killed a few times, but I still need her. I'm maybe struggling a bit. Um, the game isn't going so well for me. Need a way of getting her back out of the command zone without paying some super high commander tax. Because, like I said, people will try to kill her a lot. Turn aside, another way of protecting Jorah. Contract spell targets a permanent I control. Uh, typically that will be her. Devastation. Destroy all creatures and lands. I like it. This includes your creatures and lands. Yeah, well. Any new player that... Why would I destroy my own lands? And then you do it, and Ulamog comes down to smash somebody in the face, and you find out why you don't worry about your lands. You got Ulamog, you don't need no damn lands. Because you've just exiled two target permanents. You've got a 10-10 indestructible badass. Whenever he attacks, the poor sucker exiles top 20 cards of his or her library. Ugh. I'm not sure why I put him in here. Just I had no other deck for him other than maybe uh, Animar. So I want to see how he works. 5 for 6-5 indestructible. I'm not going to hit Devotion. That's a uh, reason why I don't have Nykthos in this deck. I don't think I'm going to have enough permanents for a very long time that have the colored mana pips. So I don't think he's going to be activated. I don't think Nick those would be useful. Reveal the first card you draw on each return. So whenever I show a land this way, I get to draw a card, which would be the land I just showed. And whenever I reveal a non-land card this way, I get to lightning bolt something. Badow! Mountain. A chroma Angel of Fury. Another big threat. So she comes down out of the time stream as a 6-6 six, six, hasty, cannot be countered flyer with trample, protection from white, protection from blue, fire breathing. Be kind of cool if I could have a Chroma Angel of Wrath in this deck, but she's white. Doesn't work. Mountain. Omniscience. As a backup strategy to Jara. If I can get Omniscience out, either paying the full price, which, 10, that's not likely to happen, or putting Omniscience in the time stream and not worrying about Jara, that's another, uh, another way of making the deck run. 
So with this in play, I can cast an online card. All right, fantastic. So I ran out of space with four cards left. Rather than redo it again, maybe we can find some way of splicing these together. I would pretty much finished talking about Omniscience, so let's put that there. Mountain. Seize the day. Four and tap target creature. After this phase, additional combat phase followed by additional main phase. With Sphinx of the Second Sun, that's actually that's actually pretty good. Okay, so if I cast is Sphinx, Sphinx of the Second Sun, let's say after my attack phase, post combat main phase, I get the additional phase. Some things come out of the time stream. All I have to do is hit one thing either in play or just come into play with Seize the Day and I get an additional attack step and I can flash it back for three okay new interaction that I hadn't thought of before Opal Palace one tap filter the mana that you're using to activate this ability add a mana of any color in your commander's color identity if you use it to cast your commander, it comes in the battlefield with initial plus and plus encounters equal to the number of times you've had to pay a commander tax this game. Kind of. So even if I get up her back in my hand, yeah, from the command zone. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's in there. It's a way of filtering out the red or the blue. All right, we gotta end on a high note. My absolutely thrashed. But signed, original printing mana crypt. Look at that. Look at that damage. Probably had a beer spilled on it at some point. I still paid 100 euros for this card. Look at that discoloration. Anyway, so this is the only mana crypt I own, only authentic mana crypt. I do have a Chinese counterfeit in one of my vintage decks. And I put it in here because she needs the two colorless mana. It's uh, nice and efficient. Could be in uh, Karavik. Because I like a lot of mana rocks in him in order to keep recasting him and keep the damage going. But I chose to put in Jara. Alright, so that's all I've got. That's the presentation of Jara. <laughs> A three minute video. Crap. Alright. Cheers. Talk to you again soon.